Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're going to be looking about calming your investment and really the, the jitters that you get from the marketplace. Now, a lot of people that invest money do not leave money in the market. And this is one of the biggest things and biggest issues that we see. When the market's going down, a lot of people pull money out. When the market is going up is the time that people start to buy, which again, when you think about it fundamentally, that is counterintuitive. When the market goes down is the time you want to be buying even though it is going down so we're going to be looking at dollar cost averaging your investment and how you can really make smart investments now investors overall are very skittish about the up and downs of the market when it comes to 401ks when it comes to automatic investing this is one of the easiest most disciplined ways to do it guys because for a majority of people if you're contributing paycheck to paycheck into your 401k it is kind of out of sight out of mind not a lot of people think about it and not a lot of people really pay attention to what it is invested in now you can have this exact same mentality on a personal portfolio whether you're putting it into an ira or you're putting it into another investment account because it is invested automatically this again is one of the absolute biggest things so an example of dollar cost averages averaging is let's say you've got ten thousand dollars let's say you received a ten thousand dollar bonus um whatever it may be to dollar cost average, you can break this up into a number of ways. Number one, you could take $1,000 a month. Over the next 10 months, you could dollar cost average in that way, which again, makes it a lot easier depending on the market fluctuations. Could be a lot beneficial, could be a little bit more expensive, but overall, the ups and downs are going to be balanced out to what you have. Now, what a lot of people will do is they will put 10,000 in, it goes down a little bit, they pull the money right back out, and that is the end that was the investment journey for a majority of people. Now, steady contributions make investing more palatable. It really takes out the emotion of investing, and that is where fundamentally you have to look at money, you have to look at investing as a tool, whether than you know, having the emotional connection to it, it buys the things you need. The more that you have of it, the more things you can buy, which I do not recommend at all, because that is not a tool to really build wealth. Now again, taking out the emotion of investment is the key to creating wealth. Doing a little bit over time will average out the good days and the bad days and make it a lot more easy for you. If you put money in there and it goes up, makes incredibly, you know, it, it makes it very easy when it comes to looking at portfolios. And when you look at it, guys, there is no reason to be looking at this thing day to day. When you look at EFTs or e EFTs on um, what I put everything in the S&P 500 look at long term if you look at short term if you're analyzing the very short term data the buys and sells are you going to be able to guess the market for the ups and the downs absolutely not guys dollar cost averaging in does make sense it has been proven through time again when you look at the S&P 500 and if you take a little minute piece of it let's say the last 30 days it could be up when you look at 2022 in its entirety, it was down. So let, let's take, for example, 2022, the S&P 500 lost almost 20%. Think about that, guys, a 20%. So if you put your $10,000 in, now it's down to 8,000. Boom, majority of people pull all the money out. You do not lose money in the stock market until that money is actually pulled out, guys. If you were dollar cost averaging, you would actually be buying it down, 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 down. It wouldn't be suffering a full 20% loss, um, which of course is the worst showing since 2008. However, this year we have seen roughly a 13 to 15% gain in that same portfolio, which means you would only be down 5%. Again, dollar cost averaging into that would mean that you'd probably be much higher than you would have just putting your $10,000 in and riding the wave all the way down. When you look, in stock surges when stock goes up when news goes out when news came out with nvidia on um, different things of that nature a lot of people rushed to buy nvidia when it just went up when it uh, went over that i believe the trillion dollar mark on the exchange um again a lot of people really went out and bought it which again that is not the time to be buying it guys y you want to buy it or at least time it a little bit if you use dollar cost averaging again it makes sense when you're putting money now there's always going to be a reason not to invest and that again is one thing if you're looking for a reason not to invest you will always find a reason not to invest 
you're missing out on the long-term wealth accumulation. Dollar cost averaging makes that a little bit easier. And again, it takes some of the logic and some of the emotion out of it because again, it makes sense. Strategy can help you minimize regret as well. I'm um, investing small sums of money into chunks make it a lot easier to stomach if it is a poorly timed investment. Now, when does a lump sum make sense? So you have that $10,000, you wanna put it all in there. Um, this is really makes the most sense when you have investors that have been well-versed in the market, or you can withstand the urge to sell during ugly times. Now, we know a lot of people that did sell out of all the cryptocurrencies, move their money out of the stock market because of everything going up in the rising rate environment, move them to CDs, and now they're sitting in CDs for an amount of time. What's gonna happen is when you think fundamentally big picture, there is gonna be a point of time when the Fed starts lowering rates or when institutions start lowering rates on CDs, savings accounts, and also all of their kind of the investment products. You will see some of the, the rates start going down, which means there will be a point People will start moving it all back into the stock market. We will start seeing money move back into cryptocurrencies, things of that nature. It is just really that the, the time and effort, when you look again, longevity over the last 10 years, it is the ups and downs that we see of the market. And again, it makes it a lot more easier and a lot more um, able to stomach the investment, the investment losses, even the investment gains. If you look back and say, well, I should have invested here, I should have invested here, I should have invested here. Let me tell you a story, guys. So when you think of, let's say, a company like Amazon, you look at Apple, when you look at Tesla, when you look at all of these larger companies that are now these, you know, going on multi-trillion dollar companies or well over a trillion dollars, when you think of it, you know, when a, a stock got to $50, when Apple got to $50, everyone said, oh, it's kind of overpriced, it's not gonna go any higher. Then it goes to 100, then it goes to 150. Well, now it's way too expensive, guys. When, when you think of that big picture, again, way too expensive. It goes to 200, it goes to 250. Well, now it's just overvalued. Then the continues and continues and continues. Then they do stock splits. The stock splits go up again. All of the time and all of the people that have said that it is far too expensive to, to get into the market um, lost out on all of that. A lot of people were saying when Bitcoin came out, Bitcoin was never gonna be worth anything. Now I believe it's hovering around $30,000, $32,000 per coin for something that was not gonna be worth anything whatsoever and was gonna be an absolute flop. And again, the technology there, and it is it does exist. There is gonna be a portion, guys. There is gonna be a time, dollar cost average, and it is the most simplest way to build wealth, period. But first of all, of course, I'm not going to leave the video without saying this. Before you start investing, guys, get rid of your debt. When you look at investing, even in some of the best years for the market, if you're up 20, you know, 20%, the debt is still going to be more expensive. When you look at credit card debt, when you look at a lot of the debt, you have to eliminate the debt if you ever want to build wealth, period. It, it, it is tried and true. We have seen it a lot of times. When you look at the average credit card balances and you look at the average credit card rates of 23%, you are not going to get 23% year over year out of an investment account, regardless of what it is, unless it's super ultra volatile and you have the ability or the chance to lose everything that you put in. You have to make sure again that you're eliminating and that you are paying off your debt prior to pumping money into an investment account. Now I know old Dave Ramsey says, hey, get the emergency fund dump every penny into um, into consolidating and paying off debt. My general opinion is just putting your minimum in the 401k that your company will match because that is money that you could be missing out. Might take a little bit longer to consolidate or pay off that debt, but overall, if you don't have a plan, if you don't have any of that compounding interest, um, I, I feel like you're missing out on money. And for a lot of people, that could actually be years of missing out on gains just because you're putting everything towards debt and the debt isn't moving as fast as you want it to. So, all right, guys, so that'll do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.